have two of any other members. So, um, <coughs> okay, so I just thank you. I want to open public comment. And Ms. Perryman, you're up first. Hi, Mr. Perryman, 7401 Green Lawn Drive, Summerfield. There's still, I want to say now that there's a new council, we got a new attorney that I would definitely look back at the book book and follow the rules of that book. Um, we need to run a green line legal government council here, and I'd like for y'all to start following those rules. Um, number two is again, I want to talk about the trail. Again, there's only one person on that whole trail <coughs> that wants it. I wish I would just shut it down. It's not an expense that this town needs. Um, it's not an, an expense that not much people in this town want. You're taking away yards, and in some cases, you may end up having to take eminent domain. And I remember way back when the council first started this, they said they would not take eminent domain. Um, that's not this looking like the situation you might have to. Number two, the water. You don't know how I feel about the water. The water is ridiculous. Who is it serving? We have two contracts, one by the Gifford County commissioners that say, hey, they're going to take care of our water. The second contract is by the Summerfield Fire District that says they will take care of our fire. Don't know why you want to charge me a third tax for this. And as per se, what I mean by third tax is, is coming out of my tax dollars that I put into Summerfield. And it's no use in it. We have two valid contracts. They were good the day they signed them. Thank you. Okay. Um, Ms. Maria Adams. Good evening. I'm Maria Adams, 5999 Warner Drive, Thank you for the opportunity to address the council tonight. Um, I just wanted to share a couple of uh, good news, good pieces of news with you. Um, first of all, I um, just want to say that um, I'm here in my role as a Moms for Liberty uh, chapter, Milford Chapter Chair. And being in that role, I also serve on the North Carolina Legislative Team for Moms for Liberty. And uh, because of that, I interact with legislators I've talked about today. So I want to share some good news about what I've been hearing from legislators about uh, the potential of Summerfield being, uh, the, that property being DNX from Summerfield. Um, first of all, Representative Brian Vig of Randolph County uh, came to our meeting um, in November, I believe it was, and he was there actually to do a, um, um, like an educational session on the legislative process. Well, he brought this up. We didn't even bring it up because in the mm -hmm. we don't necessarily talk about specifically Summerfield. But he brought up the fact that how important it is for citizens to be involved and to uh, email or to call uh, legislators whenever you have um, a success or concern or question or anything like that. And the one thing that uh, Representative Biggs um, shared with us is that he received more calls in his office about the Summerfield annexation than he did about any other legislative piece during the long session. So that really um, is amazing that our town is, you know, the citizens of our town are um, communicating with our legislators. Um, he said it's really important that, that, that they receive these messages because they really do take it into consideration. They may not always respond to every email, but they certainly take it into consideration. So the most recent conversation I had with a legislator um, from an adjacent county uh, shared this story with me, and I thought I'd share it with you, but I'm not going to reveal any names. But this legislator told me that he spoke with the mayor in an adjacent county, and that mayor had received some correspondence from Summerfield from the Summerfield Town Council. And that mayor reached out to his legislator and asked, is this something I should support, meaning uh, opposing the de-annexation? So um, that legislator said, yes, you should support Summerfield and oppose the de-annexation. So I just wanted to let you know that our voices are being heard from um, the citizens as well as from the council, and we really appreciate them being Great, thank you. Uh, Mr. Joanne Crawford. Uh, sorry about the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Crawford, I don't think we have time for a full lesson here. Wayne <laughs> Crawford, 1106 NC Highway 250 West. I happen to be a resident of the Summerfield Rural Fire Protection District, the district that Teresa was talking about. I pay two taxes for fire protection. You are all aware of the circulation being sent out by the attorney for David Couch talking about how Summerfield has suffered deaths. He did not say municipal, but he said Summerfield has suffered deaths. So I assume he means the rural fire protection has suffered deaths. So uh, this fire protection district is cr a creation of the, summer uh, of the Guilford County Commissioners. Went down there and told them about it, told them they have a problem out here because uh, we have a developer and his attorney that circulates propaganda saying there's a problem and deaths are occurring because of an inadequacy. When you guys do that? Um, uh, pivoting off what the uh, lady <coughs> just spoke of, uh, we need to, and I know the majority thinks in motion, we need to uh, rally the troops. we got an army here and just get some of them moving. Uh, I've got some reasons that we might want to uh, tell our legislatures and maybe even some other town mayors and council members why they should oppose this. Uh, three reasons I came up with. Uh, the misleading demagogy propaganda by a town resident that's also a developer that's awfully said he's a friend and he has our best interest at heart, but yet he's circulating this misinformation. That's number one. Uh, the developer knew precisely what he was buying into, the zoning conditions, when this property was purchased. The zoning already existed. So he's wanting to change the rules to suit a certain need. Third reason, in agendas, different motives. October 2013, there was a rezoning. Give it to our town minutes. You can read it in the town minutes. It says in the town minutes, David Couch said the population exceeds 10,000 within a roughly 25 square mile area, and he wants to provide retail, noting that existing and future low density development creates difficulties in marketing properties and leases. What is he asking for? High density. What did he say was a problem back in October 2013? Low density. There's a hidden agenda here, financial. <laughs> Um, here, 53 seconds. Um, <laughs> something to think about. I went and pulled down OSMB. Oh, I don't have a copy for everybody. It's going to get one of the mayor, one of the, one of the, uh, get your title, sorry. Right. Clark, yes. Uh, what I did, I pulled down all the, uh, there's 500, 551 municipalities in North Carolina. And uh, the developers circulate propaganda how we're one of the biggest municipalities. Well, on one hand, he's right. We have a relatively large population. <clears throat> but he doesn't talk about how we develop to be a small town with limited services and low density. What I'm giving you here is uh, showing the rankings of all the municipalities, all the cities in North Carolina by population density, usually North Carolina's OSMB population density estimates. And we rank in the bottom, bottom third. And uh, I give phone numbers for all these municipalities. Somebody ought to call 10. Everybody in this room ought to call 10, 10 of those municipalities and leave a message. Thank you, Mr. Crawford. Okay. Um, number eight, did you want to comment? I think there was a little problem. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's fine, Mr. Logan. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you for what y'all did. Obviously, things are not done the same in every municipality. And I have several that have been history. Uh, and thank you for what y'all did. Uh, y'all did have a fight on your hands. And as a school board member, I understand the fight on your hands. Um, a couple of things I wanted to bring out to you April 10th, Mark, is kindergarten kickoff day at Summerfield Elementary Clean. 2.30 and 5 p.m. The importance of that is that will determine the kindergarten teachers at that school. Logan. I'm sorry, can you introduce yourself and speak to your address? Michael Logan, 5202, Ramblin Road. Unfortunately, that is very small. Actually, you'll be kindergarten. It's not that small. And in the registration for kindergarten, that will determine the number of teachers at that school. One of the biggest complaints we had at the beginning of this school year was the allotment of teachers. If we have students signed up, we have teachers at that school. 
And if the students do not show up, then we have to either shift or move teachers and that disrupts students' lives because classes have already started. We have to break up classes for combined classes. It affects students and teachers, so it is important to get that done. Um, and that's also with all grade levels. If someone in the community is considering pulling their student out of their school, or considering of putting their student back into the school so the public system next year. Reach out to the schools, let them know your intentions, so we can go ahead and get student allotments up. Um, can register at my online, and that is off the gcsnc.com website. Um, you can get to it on school Mint. that's another access point. Uh, a couple of meetings coming up, one is the October 16th regular board meeting. Please come to the school board meetings. I implore every municipality to come to the meetings. Uh, October 17th, we are having a work session. I do not believe that will really pertain to anything, but if you'd like to come and see how we handle student suspensions, then please come out. Um, April 24th, this is the important meeting. This is the joint capital and facilities meeting. This is a meeting with four school board members and four county commissioners, and this is spending the $2 billion bond. So that is the most important, because we need to get some of that money out in this area. It does not allow you for public speaking, but it does allow you to observe and see what is going on. Thank you, and thank you for what you did. Thank you, Mr. Layton. Um, Council, <clears throat> Mr. Attorney, do you have any um, comments on anything that's been said this evening? Yeah, thanks everyone for talking. I'm glad to hear everybody's uh, opinion, what they have to say. And glad to hear that our voice is being heard in Raleigh. I just encourage everybody to keep calling, keep emailing. I've been personally told, fill up those inboxes. Okay. Um, 